guys. We're back. We're back. Welcome back. The pod, the pod. The pod, the pod. Welcome everyone else. Yes. Thanks for being here. Hello, Thank everybody. you so much. I know another another lovely episode of the Brotherly Love Podcast. I had to look at the sign. I actually forgot the name of it. I literally was like, <laughs> nice. another episode of this. What's this called again? The Brotherly Love Podcast. Podcast. You guys been good? Been pretty good. Yeah. 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 Can't complain. Can't complain. Nope. All right, Andy. Yeah, I saw you th- this morning. So I don't know. Yeah, we we're, drove we're, do, here we're doing together, a show. So. I'm here, always guys. confused why you act like we haven't spoken in a while. Because we're putting I on talk a damn to you show every That's day. Why. You're the true. worst. I wake up and suck. call you. I know. No, I usually wake up to a call from you. Well, that's the difference. Andy calls me, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just busy, man. But I called him today, and he gave me attitude. I was busy. Mm. little attitude. What do you need? What do you need? stress. What do you need? Here's funny, though. I had had an overdraft. He comes in the the kitchen. He's feeling bad already about it. He goes, oh, yeah, of course he is. Oh, that's right. I asked him. I was like, have you spoken to Joe yet? Yeah, but... um. I was in a really bad mood. Yeah. <laughs> you are. I was in a bad mood. He is the worst. I might have ever, been man. a little tough on the phone with you. Yeah, was. he was rude. He was so rude. Just, I've got to get to the ATM. I was yeah. like, oh, hey. that's right. Yeah, was you was walking around the house. I got to get to the ATM. What is I got to get to the ATM. You got some weird there was, going no, on so there, there was a fraud there was there was a fraud on one of my cards oh, and they lovely. shut it down right. and it was a chain reaction cuz all of my auto pays oh. were on this debit card and I started getting all these emails and I don't want to be late for you guys. Anyway, we don't need to get It's like when they shut the grid down on those movies and it's like pretty much. Yeah. So yeah, Speaking of which, did you handled, hear this? Luckily. Somebody did something, and they had a smart home. Oh, yeah. I know what it was. Okay, they but, weren't home, Yeah, but an Amazon driver reported that when he got to the door yeah. and pushed the ring doorbell, whatever doorbell right, it was, right. he heard a racial slur. Okay. Swear my life. Okay, this is interesting. So Amazon shut down the smart home for a week. What? Yeah. No. And they're like saying, is this what the future is going to be? If wow. something happens, even if it's a mistake. Remember in Demolition Man? Remember that when yeah. there were swear words? And John like, Spartan, you right. have been fine. Exactly. John Spartan, wait, wait. you've been you know, fine. Isn't that yeah. weird? Wow. Yeah. Wow. Crazy Sometimes stuff. Sometimes I feel like we're heading toward Demolition Man. And oh, if you haven't seen the film, I highly recommend it's it. It's one of the it's, greatest action movies. Well, it is, but it's also like, it's almost like, it's like for seeing the future of well, where you know, we kind of think we want to be. And like you were saying, and we, and by the way, we, we have to move this through. I, I don't want to get too no, we tardy get here. Locked up okay, because we, we have something very special Very special this, coming out on this, today. On this, yes. 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 But um, I will say that, remember what you were saying? Like every good intention, right? Yeah. It starts, everything that turns bad of starts off good. Like yeah. you start something with a good intention and all of a sudden it just mm. dives into this evil dark place. And you're right. Demolition Man is the perfect example of right. that because literally it, it, it's a utopia, right? right. Well, they're it's, there's ver- no trash. They're it's trying perfect. to. Everybody's yes, supposed to be the happy. Perfect utopia. In complete right. suppression. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And anyway. you know, I heard another really good one uh, All right, this quickly. morning. Yeah. We're going to the future in reverse. Wait a minute. Whoa. What? Whoa, wait, whoa, wait a minute. Whoa. whoa. So it's basically like you this, just right? blew my mind, Winston. All of our products That's from John they're Wick. getting worse. The clothing is actually get, falls apart quicker. Bricks break easier. Yes. We're going further into yes. the future, but we're going in reverse. Our, everything's lowering My as we go forward. My washing machine didn't make it to 10 years. I have a 10-year guarantee I, right, on the machine. Mm. It was a very expensive machine. You're right. It made it six years. We no, burn out washers they, yeah. they all the time. They make things, including iPhones, do a lot of wash. Do yeah. break. Yeah, so, you're right. Same with, why do you think the new cars take so long to come out? That's right. They have them all. Cell Actually, phones they're have just delayed. Yeah, they do. I'm yeah. convinced they do. cell they phones. Do. They, they do. They do. They do. No, yeah. Apple said it. No, See they you. said it. They, they kill the battery life. They kill it. They kill it. They kill it. Yeah. And they kill our spirit. But you know what doesn't kill our spirit, guys? Friends. I still love it. Is good friends. 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 But on the flip side, oh God. Apple no, 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 is one of the most time. important We've already companies. segued yes, to friends. And has a bigger, bigger market cap than most other countries. We've already, made, we've right. already made the transition right. to friends. But we've made the transition yeah. to friends. Okay? Apple can be our friend, too. Apple yeah, can be our I, friends. I want to be friends with But Apple. I'm talking about actual friends, not well, like a virtual friend. friend. Yes. Okay. I have a dear friend who, by the way, I have known... Since literally 1981, okay? Really? Wow. Literally. We used when to I run into one? each other. We used to run into each other in New York when we were little little kids getting our start. We would we would go on commercial audition together. I'd see her in the elevators on our way up to these really? nasty like lofts in these old buildings in early 80s Manhattan. Yes. Exposed this I, remember, I remember the smells of the oh, elevators yeah. in the room. She was so cute and so adorable and so amazing and then went on to become this huge like icon. And then believe it or not, all these years went by and we had never had an opportunity to work together. Okay. We kind of worked with all we of the people. We hadn't spoken. No, well, we, we did speak. hated each other. No, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> we did we did speak. And we had a lot of mutual friends and stuff. We never actually worked together. Gotcha. So in two thousand like eight nine, she was she was producing this movie um, with her mom, and it was called My Fake Fiance. And she called me up and was like, "Hey, Joe, I think we might have a project that we can finally do together." And 
We did this movie and it became this huge hit. And out of this, people said, my God, you guys have really great on-screen chemistry together. And ABC Family, which was an amazing network, Back then, um, I, it's well, it's called Freeform now, and honestly, I'm not a big fan of it. But and I'm just going to go on record Didn't you saying call it that Freefall the other day, <laughs> it was, it is so Freefall. Well, it is Freefall. I mean, it's just not. Look, man, they used to have a cornerstone on the market, amazing women. It was, a, it was a network for women, like 18 to 45. It was amazing. It did great stuff, and then they just ob obliterated all that to go after some younger audience. And I don't know how it's worked out. I don't know. History will be the judge of that, but so far, not that great. Anyway, and they said, would you guys? do a TV show for us. And we said, we'll come back to half hour comedy. She's had big hits, I've had big hits. And we put together Melissa and Joey and it became a massive hit over there. And it ran for five seasons, would have gone longer, but you know, that's the business end of the world. So with no further ado. With no further ado, I want to introduce one of the gentlemen. best people in the whole world. My friend, my dear friend and my co-star, Melissa Joan Hart, everybody. Yes, welcome to the pod to pod as Andy so, says. Melissa. Hi. Oh my gosh, I have so much to say. Um, first of all, Joe, you've never given me, like I've never heard you say all those things to my face. So I know, I don't say those things, I know. I can't talk that finely to your face. It just gets sappy and weird. But I can that talk that lovely. way when I actually don't really see you yet and I can talk about how I feel about you. So there you go. Well, I think the only time I was able to say those things to you was when I was drunk at our rap party. And I remember like <laughs> wrapping true. my arms around you and That's just like true. whispering in your ear like, you're awesome. And like, <laughs> That's right. Oh. That's exactly yeah, it's right. It's good to see all of you. I so know. much fun to be here. Thanks and yeah, you're here. right. Like the machines are like the machine. Like machines suck, right? Like suck. I don't know what's going on. My car has gotten stupider. Yep. And like my washing machine doesn't last anymore. Yeah. No. I, my ice break maker breaks. Yeah. Like yes. yeah, nothing. Nothing lasts. I remember our fun. grandparents, and I'm sure you remember this too. Like my meme and pop. Their fridge was like 50 years old oh, yeah. and yeah. still worked perfectly. Our yeah. fridge doesn't even open anymore. Right. It's, it's like really 10 weird. years yeah. old and there's crap in the bed. It's amazing. It's amazing. There, the washer and dryer that I grew up with was still in my dad's house. He refused to get rid of it. He had to get rid of the washer, but the dryer still worked after like 30 years. Wow. Yeah. See? Wow. That's it. Not anymore. Nope. But you know what? It's been 30 or 40 years for us, and we're still working. We are still working. We're old school. We're, we're old school. Well, and Melly, Melly and I have been, oh my, this is I like, uh, we're getting like into that. I heard Tom Cruise say like, you know, I celebrated my 40th year. People are like, oh my God. We, you and me have been doing this 42 years. Literally, yeah. 42 yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's crazy, yeah. right? I mean, well, well I've, got, yeah, I've got crazy I memories. I worked with Andy before I ever worked with I you. I was just going to say, I didn't want to steal Joe's thunder. You read my You're mind. You're stealing my thunder. You read my mind. But Melissa and I did, uh, we, were, we were on recess together. Oh, Melissa, oh, that's right. Yeah, she played my sister. Wow. I didn't. She was TJ, yeah, TJ Detweiler's sister, yeah. Speaking wow. of which. I think I was only in a few episodes because I recorded it and I was done. Well, that's, but, you like, know, it's, that's, that's But people it. love the People like still talk to me about it, which is insane. Oh, yeah. Recess is yeah. That was a big. That there's was a big been one. a lot yeah. of talk about maybe bringing that thing back well, at some point. We'll, we'll see. Who and knows? Who knows? People have talked to us about doing Melissa and Joey again. That would I'll be tell cool. you that all the time. So, that yeah. would be I mean, cool. I don't know. I really want you guys. I know to... you're busy directing and doing a whole bunch of stuff and doing yeah. your thing, but uh, I'll tell you, I think I think television would would thank us. <laughs> well, you know, I have to say, like, of my other shows, like Clarissa and Sabrina, everybody's always like, "What's your favorite? What's your favorite?" I'm like, "Oh, I can't choose. They're like my babies." But I, like. Mel Burke was like my most fun character I've ever played. And being on that set was absolutely lovely. I was conflicted because my family was on the East Coast and we were shooting on the West Coast. So I was really kind of depressed and conflicted with that yes. until they moved out. The last two seasons when I had my baby Tucker, they moved out to LA. Then I was like in a happy place. I know. But when we left that show, I have never, first of all, I'd never known that a show was ending before the, um, no. The next mm. season announcement, right? So mm. I, know. I was always like, you know, other shows like Sabrina, we thought maybe, Clarissa, yep. maybe, but never yep. knew for sure. So we knew it was ending. We spent like two to four weeks, I want to say, mourning it and Remember being that? like, yep. But I, I mean, I was like, I don't want to leave this character. Like, I love this character. Well, and it was it was one of the best. Look, it was it was an amazing character. I think what I loved about that character it was like a strong female, but you had a lot of flaws, as did my character, which I think made those two characters so great. I mean, they I love the like fact that you could step out fires. and you could be they raunchy, great, you could yeah. be vulnerable, you could be like oversexed. Yes. And a, yes. All those things. No, it's true. She was like <laughs> raunchy and slutty, but very vulnerable. Yeah. And then and then and then found like this motherly thing when she was able, you know, when she was thrust into sort of this motherly role because her sister but was like in jail. No, was, no natural instincts about that was my favorite part. Like no natural instincts. You know, I'd be saying something and Nick Robinson walks in the room and I'd be like, oh, I mean shh. 
crap, sorry. That's right. Like, you know, <laughs> that's like, right. Having to adjust to the parenting role that I was given. And it was, um, it, yeah, was, it, was so it was awesome. And we were like the Chicago Bulls. Like we were winning championships and they were like, hey, listen, we're not, we're not going to bring you back. You know, it, because <laughs> it's like, you know, the whole network was We were a little a mess. like Jordan and Pippen though, weren't we? We, we were, were a little like. We were. No, we were. Yes. And honestly, we're like at each other's throats, but also like on each other's team. Like it was a little bit it like was, we were winning together. That's what we were doing. And we were creating really great TV, something that I look back on to this day, extremely proud of what we were able to accomplish, by the way, on a network that wasn't known for comedy, yeah. didn't know how to make mm -hmm. comedy. They brought us in to basically show them how to do it. And we did it. And we did it at a really it, high level. Yeah. And that show holds up. I mean, I've seen people send me clips of it and I'll watch a scene. I'll go. That was such a good scene. The writing was so, so I good. I told you. So Joey was just on my podcast too. I was. Women binge. We I talked was. about it a little bit, but yep. um, I don't. I think I told you before you came on that episode of my podcast. I was. I watched it back, and I was watching a few. Oh no, it was before Taylor came on, and I was watching an episode. I just wanted to watch the first one again, just remember it. So I'm watching the first episode, and then I kind of transitioned to the second episode, and I noticed Mason, my 17 year old, who was just here doing jumping jacks behind the camera. By the way, <laughs> perfect. No perfect. I'm like, get out of here. But um, he, he was he he sat down and at some point started watching it with me. And then Brady, my fifteen year old, comes downstairs and he's like, "Oh, you're watching yourself on TV." And Mason turns around and goes, "It's funny. Shut up." And I was like, "Oh, yeah. like we got it." Because my kids have never watched anything I've done. They have no interest. Yeah. They think it's weird to watch me. They think it's weird when I get recognized. And but all of a sudden, there I am, like with my son, like watching my show, and he's like. He's into it. He was really into it. That is so cool. And I, I'll tell you, it, it is it has reached a younger demo than I ever thought. I mean, clearly, you're talking about your kids. I literally yeah. have 15, 16, 17-year-olds coming up to me saying, dude, we're binging this show. It's so great. And I can't believe I it. I think during the pandemic, people found it. They like, did. Anyone that didn't know about ABC Family before, because they thought it was a kid. Like, our big fight with that was that we thought they thought it was a kid's network. They thought it was Disney. They did. And it, and it was would, not. How many times, Joey, did you say... What did you keep saying? This is ABC Cable. This is not Disney Channel. <laughs> it's not. I know. And honestly, even when they were going through, remember the whole renaming thing? And I know I made fun of it with like the free form. And believe me, I'm the, the I'm the last person to make fun of it. There were memes about that. I mean, um, about how horrible. Gotcha. That made no sense. But you take ABC, this great property that everybody knows for great quality comedy and TV. All they needed to do was change the family to cable. Just call it ABC Plus or ABC C. Or, right, absolutely. But to then take ABC out of it, to throw away all these amazing... Dude, they you just know, did the same thing HBO. with HBO. HBO became Max. Max. Just said the same like, thing. And we're like, what is going why? on? Why would you do away with H HBO? It's is like iconic. Like, that's the brand. It's iconic. Home but box it's office. The Max was Cinemax, right? Didn't didn't HBO yes, and Cinemax... Well, that's the but weird they kept thing. The Max part. I know. Right. And why would you really keep weird? the Max part? Wait, and, and, and would, tell me if you, you agree with this, HBO Melissa. Part. Didn't the Cinemax sort of be like the nudie stuff? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Remember what? Skin of like, Max? Isn't that what you think of when Red you see shoes, Max? Red Shoe Diaries yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I don't yeah, know I what know. is going on. Yeah. Those weird movies we all used to that used to come on the TV at like one a.m. You're like, wow, what is this nudity? Wow, Skinamax. I know. I was watching yeah. like RoboCop and yeah, went to some true. weird yeah, Or you're porn. flipping through with like Blue the lights. grandparents <laughs> on the couch and all yes. of a sudden there's like this soft core well, porn scene. And yes. you're like, that was our on? version of YouTube. Like I feel like my kids, like my 10 year old watches YouTube all the time where I'm like, dude, Stop watching that. It leads one thing leads to another thing to another thing. It's Skinamax did that, right? Like absolutely. Like, bad path where you're like, What's this? Yes. Oh yes. No. I've <laughs> both both my older girls have have you know been watching things on YouTube and just gone to one thing or another. They love makeup, so they've been they, oh. they were both looking at oh, like the cosmetology tutorials? stuff. Yeah. The tutorials and one thing goes to another, and one thing goes to another. You know, and I'll just uh, the imagination can run wild. But they were my middle daughter Libby was 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 looking up lipstick, and you can imagine where that went. Oh, so yes, no. it was horrible but to my point and to your point dude like instead went. of just calling it abc cable they went just free form and then yeah. people were like what is this I mean, where did that go what is this what and is like you said they were trying to make it younger even at one point remember how mad we got joe when they tried to they were like we're going to start to pivot this towards the kids point of view and not you we're like it's called melissa and joey but you want us to be like the i know the side character stories like exactly. that's weird like and well we need to uh, you're absolutely right and, and what made us angry about that is that 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 that's not what this show was like it. And, and by the way, it was what we were doing was working. So sometimes you have to make those shifts in TV shows. When it's if, not if, working. If it's not working, yeah. you know, like family matters was about the kids, right? Yeah. A lot of these shows were about the kids. 
Our show was a two-hander right. that had these 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 young teens that were that were thrust into this two-hander, yep. and they were doing it yeah. not because the show was dictating, because because they as a network well, wanted to like an MTV. Here's crowd, the funny thing, which they weren't going to ever get, and still to this day have not well, gotten no, that. No, because here's so. here's the funny thing, and whenever they they say that, I get it, because that used to be the psychology. You know what you'd want to do? You always got to get that next generation. You want right. to get to the kids. You know that's right. everything. Right, but. What they forgot and what they didn't really do their research on is that kids don't watch TV. No, they don't. They're no. on their phones. <laughs> they're on laptop. Yeah. They're on computers. They mm -hmm. don't sit down like our generation did. So now you're moving it into a generation that literally will not watch it the just, television like that. It didn't really make it's sense. It's too long. Everything, everything with kids, like the reason why their attention spans are getting so short, right? Like everything is done in a minute. Mm -hmm. Instagram's done in a minute. TikTok's done in a minute. YouTube videos are done. I'm watching my son just now. I went down to have like a little snack with my son and he's watching YouTube and it's like, it's a series on YouTube. So he's showing me this one girl who keeps saying she's not pretty, but then she's like, she might get pretty and she might get a date to the prom and she might. And I was like, but it's like a series of one minute videos. It was so weird. Wow. So weird. Wow. I, I do not like it. And I don't know how to get them off it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not pretty. I'm not pretty. Okay. Listen. Listen, get over it. But does right. she get a date? Right. To does the prom? she get a date? Now I'm now I'm It's hooked. a cliffhanger. I'm hooked. I gotta exactly. know. My two year old doesn't need to be watching that. I was like, let's go watch something like Boy Meets World. Let's go watch something age appropriate mm. for you that might you know, so he he does watch a little bit of like Andy Griffith or Looney Tunes. Does he? Okay. He, he watches Andy Griffith. I, I used to love that yeah. show. Oh my gosh! I used to, you know. Mark oh, puts it on for him every morning at breakfast. He was sick of him watching YouTube, and he puts on Andy Griffith or Looney Tunes. That and that's well, Looney Tunes, do. Oh my yeah, gosh! I, I made my girls watch all the classics, all the Looney Tunes. I made that's him, Tom and Jerry, right? I made Flintstone. him watch Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny, yeah. Daffy Duck. Oh, oh, oh my gosh! You know my favorite episode is Tweety Bird with Jekyll and Hyde. I'm obsessed with this. I'm obsessed. You ever seen this? Yeah, okay, true. and you find find this. You gotta it's look at it. Okay, it's so good. So Tweety Bird gets into some weird. He gets potion. into Jacqueline Hyde potion, the <laughs> right. doctor's potion. So then Tweety oh, Bird. Yes, I remember and he that. Walks around these big he eyes. becomes this massive <laughs> yeah. Tweety Bird, and he stalks. He yeah. stalks Sylvester. Yeah. He turns it on the cat. It's so good. So because yeah, yeah, and right. you know, so Sylvester gets. He goes. Wah! He gets it, and then all of a sudden it's like. <laughs> but he has this crazy <laughs> laugh. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I started watching with my kids. We were watching Flintstones a little bit. Usually, like in the back of the car. Flintstones. The DVD player in the back of the car. So they were watching the Flintstones, but I started realizing like it's a little male chauvinist actually. Well, <laughs> the guys are like they're constantly like, get away. You don't like, oh, the girls are gonna want us to go to dinner with them tonight or whatever. And then the girls <laughs> yeah, are like, yeah. Yeah. Well, know, I don't know, they're bon. trying to get out I don't of know it, if I feel or... like going to dinner, Brian. <laughs> well, <Willie> Fred. <laughs> then at the end, the women are there like, told you so, you know. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> And that's actually Joey. I don't know if you even know, but like when we first met with the writers, David Kendall and Bob Young. Yes. Like my my thing with them was I was like, I do not want to be the like, don't act like that. Told I do you remember so. that. Like, I, like, mm. I, I want to be the hot dumpster fire. Like I do not want to be the one that's like, yeah, you shouldn't have done that. You yep. know, like nope. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad that you weren't because that's what kept it. That's what yeah, made it, it was that's kept what made it fresh. It great. Yeah, yeah. It kept it really fresh. Yep. Sure. Yeah. That and the fact that I didn't know how to walk in heels and I look like I'm tripping everywhere I walk on that set. <laughs> it was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. I had huge shoes and I would just trip like, yep. everywhere oh, I went. I, was like, I, walked like a, I walked like I was drunk all the time. Yes, basically. yes. sometimes yeah. she was. No, never, <laughs> never, never. We had, we, never. we had, honestly, like you said, that was one of the best sets ever. Because it started at the top with you and I in terms of just the right attitude and the right work ethic. And boy, did we did did we make that kind of just trickle down through all the departments. And there was, well, we, you know, there was literally no always, drama on that show. Helpful. There was no drama. When the on actors that show. don't have competitive, like when you're not competitive with your co-stars, when there's room for everyone to succeed and everyone has a voice and everyone, you know what I mean? Like there was no ego, there was no nope. diva, there was nope. no, you know, it was just like we're here to do the work and go home. We yes. all had things we wanted to do. You wanted to drive fast cars that never got to work on time, and I, I wanted did. to. <laughs> I did. That's right. I did. I did. I ran. Awesome. I ran. And I wanted to ride late. my bike back to my apartment. So. Yep. She would r ride her bike. <laughs> yeah. Woo, I, I, I lived across the way. She go. We lived across the street from each other, oh, and like I would. My ride, it was a block away. Yeah, it was. I was like, I'm just gonna ride a bike. It was, and that's that's right. I forgot that. Like you, you literally moved back east. You went to Connecticut or something. Like right, the show got picked up, and you had already right planned to move. Mm. That was that was. I remember that. That was crazy. You and my mom were both like, "This is stupid. You shouldn't move." And I was like, "Well, you can never count on anything in this business. Who knows? 
And it was like a, it was like six months later or almost a year later that the show went. Wow. And I was like, oh, yeah. no, I got to move back to L.A., but I wanted to leave my kids where they were. So that was yep. my, my conundrum was like, I want my kids to sleep in their bed and go to school. Mason was just starting kindergarten. And I was like, I just feel like he needs to, like, plant, you know, his roots here. I don't disagree. And I can go back and forth. But then it ended up being really, really hard on me to have weekends without them. And then we get to our schedule was so light. That I'd be done with work at 3 p.m. and be like, what am I going to do? Like, I know, I know. <laughs> Well, Mel and I were masters, so we, no, I we know. kicked I, everybody's I, butt, and we had an amazing schedule because we were both like, look, let's work really hard, and we don't need to be here any longer than we need to be here. Like, we don't need well, to Well, by second season, time. we were doing a four-day work week, yes. and I was wow. able to fly home for the weekend. That's so right. that, was, wow. that was great. We right. moved it to Thursday nights. That's right. And That's right. we were able to do our live shows on Thursday night. I was able to catch a red eye at 11 p.m. on a show night. I remember. Somehow 11, 11 p.m. flight, show up Friday morning, be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, fly back Sunday night. That's wow. right. That's right. Because of the time change. And you were both to... on the show. Yeah. Yes. I know. Yes. Thank you really guys fun. for having me. Yeah, it was, really yeah that was fun. It huh? was really fun. I know. Yeah. I know. Mel Mel liked it because she got to, you know, she she loved the storyline where, you know, you got to like sort of be into her and then I got jealous. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I like that too. I, I did like, like that, that too. Well, yeah, I did. It was fun. I... <laughs> <laughs> what a well, I, I don't know. Matt and I, Matt and I are uh, uh, as well as well matched as you and I are, Joe. I think Matt and I might have more I know. Um, similar. I know. Outside. Uh, I think and so. Andy, I don't even think we had a scene together. You were with Taylor. You were her teacher, right? That's right. Yeah. Andy, that was me. That was me. Andy, yeah. Andy, Andy, yeah. Andy, yeah. Andy, yeah. Andy I, mean, was... I didn't even realize that. I just, no, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yes, yeah that's, that's exactly right. That's what right. I did. No, 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 no. No, of you were. You were you played and uh, Matt. You played Joey's brother. I played the brother, the the sleazy brother. Moved, yeah, who came back in and was like in the basement. You moved in the basement, I think. You did. I think so. Right? You did. That's right. And then you kicked remember me out got, or something. Remember we got no big fight. Yeah, that's we right. Got no big you fight. Kicked me out. Yeah, it's great. It was me. Over me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that over you. Fun. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Over with you. Andy, I never got to work with you in that capacity, only on voiceover. So. I know. I know. Well, we'll, we'll do have something. to find a way to do it again. We'll do yeah. something. We should really do something. I'd love again. All right. Yeah. I mean, we got a lot of yeah. stuff oh, going and on. Oh, Andy, I Andy, I would, I have to tell you that I have a friend who's a producer on Young Sheldon, who is obsessed with you. Please don't tell and him she, that. Andy's <laughs> already thinking he's the coolest one. No, I really. Please. This is not we true. Can't, we can't. These guys like he, knocking he, me down he because flops it's his a hair false, back and forth. It's a he's false like, just perception so of me. Cool. They just. I'm so I'm the young one. I I'm the young they're one. They're jealous cool. of you, Andy. They're just jealous of you, Thanks. and they're just jealous of how laid back and cool you're. The third brother, you're gonna get picked Thanks. on. You always have. Yes. You're Thanks. used to take. It's not jealousy, three okay? Boys. It's envy. It's good. It's envy. I have three boys, and <laughs> yep. I'll tell you, my youngest is my loudest because if he wasn't, he would just get stomped on by the other ones. That's but you have two true. very loud brothers there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's but, true. Yeah. Yeah. Now I just don't really talk. I just let them. <laughs> I like throw a knife in the middle and let them fight it out, and then I, you know, once they're bleeding, once I'll the, come in and once they're bleeding, save the day. day. Right, yeah. right. I'll mend them yeah. back to health. So wait, and, I need to know from the three of you, like, okay, so wait, who likes me? I have some serious <laughs> questions about three boys. Circling back to who likes me? No, no, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, yeah. So she's, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll hook you up. I'll All right. Get, All right. All right. So now okay, say, so say, what, say what you were gonna say. Say what you were gonna, gonna say. You were so I have question. to ask you guys, the three of you, three brothers, having three boys myself, and they're all getting to those teenage years and. I am so scared they're not going to be friends. Like, what do like what do I need to know about the different the mm -hmm. first of all the age like the first second third like the what's that called uh, uh, the birth, birth order order yeah the birth order and the like they're not really friends and it makes really? me so sad. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how old are they? Seventeen, fifteen, and ten. Wow. Mm. Matt how, and I are far? three and a half. Well, almost three and yeah, three and three and a half years apart, and and Andy and I are eleven and a half years apart. So okay. Matt and Andy are like eight years, you know, but, um, you know, Mel, it's so interesting for us because we were working together a lot. Yeah. So we only had each other for a lot of the time. Yeah, and, true. and our parents, our family, they beat us into submission really to get along. Yes. No, they, they just, they just kept pounding away how vital it was, the connective tissue between us and his brothers. And yeah. one day that's all it's going to be. And one yeah. day when mom and dad are not with us, that's it's going to be gonna us be. to run the family and, yeah. you know, okay. all these things. And we we took that to heart. And when we had our best friends, because everybody goes through those things, when we had our best friends, they were folded into our family. It's true. So our best friends, like when we went on family trips, Matt brought mm -hmm. his best friend. I brought my best friend. Andy brought his best friend. 
that's how we did it. And sometimes Matt actually shared his best friend with Andy. Yeah. Most of, in Andy fact, had a all best of my friends became yeah. Andy's yeah. Yeah. friends. So. One, of, one of my best friends is, is Matt's best friend. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so I feel like we had a really interesting advantage there because of our working together so much as kids. Yeah, it's true. We yeah. just innately became each other's best pals, and we yeah. didn't really well, think the, about any other it's option. One that, I'm glad you said that about your parents saying that you're going to be best friends someday because I feel like I say that to them all the time. I show them examples of brothers all the time yep. oh, yeah. that are close now that weren't th that'll say they beat the crap out of each other and whatever. Right. Absolutely. Don't even beat the crap out of each other. They just kind of ignore each other. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. they're not together in any situations where they're friendly or they have anything. They're only just now started like I I mean like two weeks ago I saw them <laughs> like to hang out together. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. oh my God, that makes me so happy. Like I tried not to dork out on it, but I kind of did because I was like you guys are playing video games together? Like, Aww. my kids never play video games. That's cool. And I was like, I'm okay with you guys playing video games if it's together. Like, do right. that together. It's That's great. awesome, you know? Yep. And they do kind of like each other's friends probably better than they like each other. So that does help, too. I'm going to take that. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm yeah, going to keep and I and I think I think it comes in seasons, you know. There it definitely were does. there definitely were does. times, you know. Look, like the first one to drive, you know, the oldest one, which I know I was. You know, you think you're you think you're cool shit, so like you don't want to like you know. It's it's like for a minute, I mean, you're just it, it's it's not that I didn't love Matt, but for a minute I thought like I'm past where he is. So well, I got I got to be with my friends that are all driving, that yeah. are all doing our thing for sure. Even in our relationship, we were always tight, but that's. I remember feeling that way, and I remember Matt feeling as the middle one up. It's my time to branch out, so yeah. I'm gonna do my thing. We all went through it, and 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 Andy Absolutely. came up, you know, younger, so he was the one going like, "Now it's my time," you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I th and I think, dare I say that that the older you get, the the closer you get to it. Allows, well, it so really it allows. Depends, for, for, but yes, you know. hopefully that's the case. I, that's what I'm hoping. I'm literally like, it's my prayer that they will be, that they will see that they are, they share a past, and they're gonna be together in the future. Like, hopefully that's. That they are the only ones that kind of understand where they came from, who their parents are. So They'll true. have us as the common enemy a little bit too. So <laughs> of course, yeah. You guys, I mean, do they like at family dinners and stuff? Do they sit next to each other? Does anybody talk around the table? Do they ever talk about like we do? So we go to church every Sunday, and okay. then we go to family brunch after. Usually, we take a friend or something. If one of their friends has slept over and has gone to church with us, of yeah. course. But um, but they, re I guess last weekend, I wasn't here, but um, Mark said that at lunch they talked, uh, it was just Mason and Brady, and that after they left, that Brady said it was one of the best conversations he's ever had with his big brother. So I was like, ah, oh, that's cool. Really? That like, is awesome. So yeah, they do. And like, it's funny when Mark's not around, Mason will step up as sort of the man of the house. Oh yeah. And like, yep. Mark was out of town and I wanted to take Tucker and Brady to like a hibachi place because Mark wouldn't go there. And so I was like, well, if he's out of town, we're going to go. And I called Mason and said, hey, any chance, <laughs> any chance you want to come meet us for dinner? And he's like, no, I'm with my friends. And, da, da, da. and then he went, call me back. He's like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to come by. And he came by the dinner and he sat down and he took Tucker's phone away. He goes, excuse me, this is dinner time. We're going to talk. Mm. What are you eating, Brady? That's not enough protein. You need to order chicken or shrimp. Awesome. And like, you know, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden he started kind of, but not in like a, the usual aggressive brother way of like, you're an idiot. Like, yeah, what are right. you doing? Yeah. Yeah. You damn, suck. Eat your damn shrimp. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yep. You well, know, what about I, birth order though? Like Matt, have you? Because my middle one, I was always so afraid. He's such a quintessential middle child. Yeah. Quiet, like never had kind of the attention and the the spotlight like his big brother did. And I just wonder if like how that plays out with like com like Mason's always competitive with his little brother, which is so weird because yeah. Mason kind of is always has always been you know things come easy to him. Mason is smart. He's athletic. He's musical. Girls like him. And then there's Brady, who was small, dyslexic, like all these things. Got it. But he's kind of quiet and like hid in the shadows. And now he's having his moment because he's becoming like an amazing athlete. Right. And so cool. It, yeah, no, that's that's exactly the experience Matt was I actually had. an amazing Matt is an amazing athlete, actually. Well, well so. I mean, I wasn't speaking to that, but I was saying that I I was quiet. Everyone thought I was the quiet one, and it wasn't that I'm necessarily quiet. Uh, actually, to the contrary, Matt has become the loudest. One. <laughs> it's true. Matt literally doesn't even You're know he's screaming. It's, he doesn't even it's, know he's screaming, and we're like, "Why are you screaming at us?" He's like. Am I? It's like, yes, you're <laughs> yeah, screaming. True. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I think I think being the middle child, when you have an older brother that you know is more vocal, you just it's a it's just a natural inclination to kind of sit back, and it also gives you like I don't know, it gives you a little bit of a heads up, you know, because you you can watch your older brother go through mistakes and things, and you can correct those before you do them, or just learn from them. So there's actually a benefit to it. But yes, the middle child tends to be 
more quiet, more reserved. That's what I found. Especially like it, it, Brady, my, my middle one, Brady, is really interesting to me because he is the one who understands the value of a, a of a good friendship of like one on one time, mm. which I'm still learning in my 40s. Mm. I mean, I'm only two days older than Joe, but you know, yeah, you, you are. would never go. <laughs> yeah, you are, you um, old lady. What? <laughs> it's <laughs> awful. But I think oh, old. Lady old. But I look ten years younger, <laughs> right? No, right? no, you look fantastic. Yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah, you I was going to bring good. that up you when you were very, talking very about good. the ages of your of your boys. I was thinking, wow crazy you right look, yeah wonderful. but What's it's so funny because now Mel? brady is like brady's super athletic brady is the one that's like so we're trying to force mason to get a job mason just quit the football team which you know if you know my husband is Wait, just absolutely what devastating no that's like i know dun, dun, oh, really? dun. 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 it's bad yes that yeah. would be that would be mark going like no <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's been a lot of like, that's all we've been grieving that very much so. But uh, Brady's coming out to be a great athlete. So now we're like, Mason, if you're not on the football team, you have to do something with your time. You got to get a job. So he's sure. been like fighting us on getting a job. Now Brady comes up to me the other night and whispers in my ear, uh, can you take me down to the grocery store? Because I think I want to get a job bagging groceries. I want to beat Mason to the job thing too. Like wow. now he's the athlete. He's the get the job. He's learning how to drive. So he's oh, like, gosh. he's He's catching up. Well, there's nothing He's, like competition, honestly, yeah. to drive. To Good. Drive. It's, it's healthy, actually. Yeah. Really healthy. <laughs> to drive like, you forward. I've experienced with these guys where I've been slacking, and the only thing I really had to compare to was what these guys were doing. So it, it forced me to get my act together at times in my life. So we, it's we, been we've a great actually support. finally, I think, harnessed it as adults where, like, we finally decided coming out of the pandemic, like, that we're going to get back together again and start working again, like, together a lot, like, doing the movies that we've been doing and, 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 and doing the podcast and these things. And it's. We've actually used the competition as one. Like we're competitive yeah. to accomplish cumulatively one. what we want to accomplish now. And that's the first time we've ever been able to do that, you know? And oh, yeah. do you remember one podcast? I was telling a story about horses. Oh, geez. Here we okay. Do you remember this? Yeah, brother horses and carry brother more horse. than normal. No, wait. Horses. Yes, yes. And you know what? I finally I was I was actually reading another story about this situation because people are now talking about it. Not yeah. because of me, but because it went around Imagine social media. Imagine because of me, because of me. Saying. Yes. No, because of social media. And it's it is exactly that. It's the brother competition. Yeah. It's that when one starts to pull a little more, the <laughs> other one wants to out pull it. And then when it's it's they're constantly calling for more and more. There was a study. So it's very beneficial. There was a study that Matt referred to in right. in uh, in one of our shows that that said you you get three equally sized horses together and you you try to encourage them to pull and they'll pull a certain amount of weight right according to the size of the horses it's two. but if but it's, it's two horses oh it's two horses we're already, okay we've already okay <laughs> but if you get 12 horses oh, to get no. no but if you get two brothers together family right horse. or two family related horses they can pull, pull more, more weight. way more weight than the than two, two that are not related horses than yes. they just met even if they're big bulky strong male horses <laughs> they just put together to pull this cart you could put two sibling go. horses, and they'll outpull those horses strictly yes. by because right, it's figure there's a. Out how to put this to work with my boys? That's like, right. I've got to figure out right. why the science. That's right. To that's right. I think you're doing that's right. Okay. I mean, that's the thing that they always put into our head was blood's thicker than water. Yes. In the end yeah. of the day, those guys are all you're going to have and all that you can trust because yep. they'll actually give it to you straight, even yep. if you don't like it. And yeah. you can have a good day and a bad day, and no matter what, you can have a fight, you can have an argument. Right. At the end of the day, right. because you're family, you're always going to be there for each other. Right. I tell you know my two oldest ones, Charlie and Libby, who I know you know, but you know all the time because they go through it too. I mean, Charlie's 17, right, and she's driving, and she actually has a, a, a almost a full time job. She works four days a week, and she's kicking butt and doing great. But you know, I tell her all the time because Libby's about you know got her little friend click, and Charlie's got her friend. I say, guys. These, the likelihood of you having these besties, you know, when you're my age is slim to none. The likelihood that you and your sister will always be there for each other is 100%. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. and I'm telling you, no matter what, well, you and, and I know Charlie that too, will like, be best Joe, friends. As much as you and I have in common, I mean, one of the things we have in common is being the oldest in our, in the birth order. Yep. But I have, there's eight of us and I can't I mean wow. I tell you that we are all like even though the youngest is 24 we are all super close I and know. no I know I see the pics all the time you guys doing your family reunions and your get togethers it's awesome eight of you that's pretty cool. oh yeah there's eight of us and Andy you need to ask your mom because I think you're a product of one of my siblings like I think what happened was at an audition your mom held one of my siblings wait how old are you again Andy's 35. 35 I went to school with one of your you're 35? with your sister you did which so. one Emily? Yeah. So Emily is, oh. Emily's 37 She's a year older. Yeah, so she's a year older. So there you go. Yeah. 
Yeah. It was probably like Emily. your mom held her at an audition, and yeah. she went, oh, "I think I have to have another." That makes that's what my sense. mom. My mom remembers Donna being like, mm. "Oh yeah, that nope, I gotta sense. have another." Yep, that that crazy, sense. right? Yep. How, how's uh, your mom doing? My mom's doing great. She yeah. she calls herself a boomerang. So not only does she have, she has seven kids. My dad has another one. It's funny because like there's ten grandkids now. So my mom calls herself. Wait, a boomerang. there's ten grandkids now. There's ten grand. I have three. Nice. My sister has two. My my Holy brother has two girls. My poor brother, Holy the man. only brother in our whole family. He has seven sisters and he's got two daughters. He's like, <laughs> that's look. I'm very <laughs> thankful, but I have three girls. That's all I have is girls. Yeah. That's it. It's but crazy. look what you're it's it's payback for what your mom had to go through, right? It's uh, yep. like you get you get yep. the opposite. I, it's, it's wild. Because I have all boys. I grew up with mainly sisters and I have all boys. Wow. And like so wild. Jerry and I have like a lot we have a lot of that kind of like We do, like the yin and yang, the so. compliment. I know, I know. It's so yeah, wild. It's, it's so wild. I can't ten grandchildren. Wow. Ten grandkids. So she so what she did was she sold her house. She has an apartment in LA, she has an apartment in Paris, she has an apartment in New York, and she's got a sprinter van. That she and her husband, Leslie, drive around. Like, they boomerang. They're like, we're coming to Nashville to see you. Then we're going to head to New York and see this one. Then we're going to go back to San Diego and see that one. And then we'll be up to California. Then we'll fly to Paris. And we'll then on the way back through, we'll stop in Nashville. And, and like, that's what she does is, like, visits kids and grandkids. That's pretty cool. Besides one of your producing sisters, our movies. Or two of your sisters. One of your sisters was, they are, they were either going to school in Paris or they were living in Paris. Or which which one yeah. is that? Tell me because I, I get youngest. Through. The youngest of my mom's daughters, Sammy, who I think is 20, I can't keep track of it all now, 27, okay. 25, yeah. she wanted to go to to college in Paris. And her older sister, they're both my uh, my stepdad's kids. They're right. my mom's daughters, but right. um, my stepdad's kids. They wanted to go, they, wanted, they didn't want to be apart. So they went both to Paris. One's an art curator and one's a chef. So they're wow. both Parisian. That's so cool. Is that why your mom bought an apartment there or did she just always want to have an apartment there? Is that kind of why? I think what she did was she bought the apartment so my sisters could rent it back from her mm. so they could never say no to her staying there. Nah, then, that's the way to do if it. If she goes, she has to stay there and they can't say no. Technically, this is my place. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I think there's a lot of that. Smart, smart one. Your mom's yep. a smart cookie. one. Yep. Paula's smart. She did. Yep, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. So now you are now you are you sorry are, to interrupt you, but I always oh. loved the fact that you worked with your with your mom. I thought that was always so cool. Oh, I yeah. really respected that. I thought that. Oh, was, they they they've I know. They've ass rushed, together. Rushed I know. I, I love. Yeah, it started I love with that. Sabrina. It started with Sabrina, where um, after Clarissa ended, and I was uh, kind of getting a lot. She was managing my career most of my childhood, and yeah, she, our mom did yeah, for us ours as well. Too. Yeah, yeah, because they like know they know your stuff. They know yeah, what you're good it. at. They know. Who you're Strengths, weakness, you know, all that. Yeah. So, so she started managing my career, and then after Clarissa was over, she didn't like the offers coming in for me. So she was like, "We should, we should do something ourselves. We should find some." And someone so handed her yeah. a comic of Sabrina on a playground at hmm. one of my siblings' schools in New York City. Handed her a play uh, on the playground, handed her the comic strip, and said, "This would be great for Melissa." And because of my relationship with Nickelodeon and, and our connection at Viacom, she went to Viacom. They sold it to Showtime as a movie. Wow. They kept kept saying to them, this would be a great series. She bought the comic strip for a dollar, first of all. What? For, wow. Wait a minute. Wow. What? Yeah, for she dollar. optioned it for one dollar. One? Just to get the option for Are you for kidding me? One dollar? Yeah. That's what, an amazing. What decade was this? Was That's just, 1910? It's a technical exchange. Like when you're like, hey, give it to me for, instead of like, you know, spec or whatever we call right, it. Right, right. Wow. She's like, here's a dollar. So it's an official exchange. Here's a dollar. Give me the rights for six months. I'll take oh. it out. Immediately sold the movie. While she was making the movie, while we were making the movie in Vancouver, she was talking to Viacom the whole time going, this would be a great series. And I'm like, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. So since my mom, I don't know if you remember this joke from the show, but she loves editing. That's like her thing. I do it's know like, that. Mm, I do know that. I didn't know yes, that. Yes, she Casting loves it. Casting and editing. Yep. That's her, like her thing. That's her thing. So she yes. was in the Bay with the Sabrina movie, and she goes, uh, she's like, she decided to cut together a trailer of what it would look like to have a Sabrina series. She so took smart. it to wow. so five smart. networks, got three in the room offers, one with the TGIF wow. time slot, and just and all of a sudden we had a show on ABC. So unbelievable. Wow. So smart and cool unbelievable. Your mom. And that show And I think we've had, you know, like you guys, we've had our, you know, being family and working together is great, but it's tough. Yes. At times. Yes. Yep. But I think yes. we've we over the years have come to a really nice, like I've come to understand and, and respect like who do you trust more than your mom? And you guys yeah. know this. Who do yep. you trust more than your mom to look out for you and take care of you? Like that's never going to stab you in the back or leave right. you or be greedy, you know? Right. Yeah, and I right. just feel like she's always been like, no matter how many disagreements we've had or things we can, 
take the work stuff and leave it here and then and immediately be like I'll be like no I'm not doing that I don't want to do that project I don't know why you love this script so much I hate it I'm never doing it anyway I love you I'll see you at Thanksgiving yeah. exactly you got it exactly. no you got it and at the end exactly of the day right. you're right you can have those those disagreements those arguments those blow ups even but you know like it's family it's your mom it's gonna be fine yeah. you'll see her later that night exactly. you gotta figure it out exactly yeah. no that's I didn't realize that wow that is awesome that's so cool and that so Sabrina was on for how many years was that thing on uh, seven, seven seasons. Wow. We did 103 episodes. Amazing. Yeah. So And then cool. Joe, she was like, she was so, like, she always loved you and all of you and your mom from all the years of seeing you in auditions and, and just yep. running into each other. Joey and I, we, what do we, what do you call it? Planted the time capsule at Nickelodeon? We did. We did. We dated yes. like all my friends, but never like even hit on me. So that's <laughs> weird. But- <laughs> Right. Well, he knew the future. He didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to muck anything up. Yeah, I didn't want to mess up the future. I didn't want to mess up the future. I can see things. I don't want to scare people, but I can actually see things. No. Um, but you came down to Orlando for I did. two things. I did. You I, were there with Lee Martin when she was shooting the movie uh, with John Goodman. Uh, uh, really? Uh, uh, matinee. Matinee. Really? Hmm. I don't. You were there. I don't even remember there, that. And I think you came to visit her, and we went, and I danced on a table at Hard Rock Cafe at Universal Studios. Wow! Wow! I don't. I, don't, I wow! Okay. Wow! <laughs> I, I remember and, the time capsule. And I became close with Kelly, and then Love too. You came down, or maybe you brought Love down when we were doing the time capsule burying. No, I think that was before because time capsule was like ninety. What was it? Ninety two. Yeah, it was ninety two. Yeah, ninety one. 91, like 92. No, no, yeah. no, you're right. Like 92, 93. Right, right. 92, 93. Yeah. Now, are they going to, are they, are they going to ever unearth this thing? This, yeah, this, yeah. This time, uh, this, this it's time? on, it's on my, we talked about it on my podcast and my producer put in a little thing about it. I know. And it, I forget like, now because I thought it was like, 30 years, but it, you said it was 35 years maybe or something? 130 I know, I years. 140 or 50 years. We're never going to be here. It's just dust. <laughs> I'll be a little long in the tooth. It's just dust. Just a, we'll be in there. <laughs> yeah. They're going to put us in there. <laughs> we'll be in the and this is a skeleton. Who's this? <laughs> oh. Joey Lawrence. Oh. How do hey! we tell? He's still got the flannel. Yeah. It's the one thing that lasted. It's a femur wrapped yeah, in a flannel. Yeah, it's just a, yeah. it's a femur in it's a just, flannel. It's just bones. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, that's awesome and really sad. I don't want to think about myself dying. <laughs> I want to live like forever. Live. I don't like the mortality. No, I don't either. Maybe you know. I, I don't know what. I don't like it. I don't like it. You know. I'll tell you not to get too somber, but like, <laughs> I think as a guy, like, like I never really well, thought about that. And then you know, I watched like uh, my grandmother pass away. Yeah, I know. And like, well, all in of life, a sudden, you start it was, like, seeing the first yeah. really close member yeah, of our family that I watched literally pass away. Literally really, watched it. It's really rough. And then I just thought I yeah. was dying for a decade. I literally thought like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. I know. You know? When you start well, to lose, you were yeah, a germ- we were doing Melissa and Joey. You were a germaphobe. Is he yeah, like that guy? He still is a hypochondriac. I'm not a if you, I swear to God, if you sit anywhere in a room and somebody's a doctor or a nurse, my brother Joe. He gets he really turns, He goes wide eyed. He's like, let me tell you something. My blood pressure is this. Did this chart look normal to you? He will, I swear to God. You will bizarre. on, on a, a lot corner of pressure on me a long and time. usually yeah, force the, the nurse, the doctor out of the house party wherever yeah. he's yeah. at. Hey, wait, wait I'm but not let done. me say that he's like that in a lot of other places too. So get this. So <laughs> <laughs> I have a really Can funny story this? about Monte Can Carlo. No I'm kidding. No, good. No, I don't know if you know. Like, so there was this there's this Probably funny story not. I tell that I never have told Joe, but like Perfect. we were in a limo on our way to like the film festival at in Monte Carlo, like the Monte Carlo Television Plus That's and ABC right. Fan Fest there. That's but right. instead of taking I got so mad at you that you didn't take your wife, you took your manager. Because I cashed in my two first class plane tickets. You know tickets who did that? My four. manager was like, I have to go with you. We have this big deal to discuss. And I was like, I guess so. Are so you sure was... about your wife? You're like, no, it's business. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is fun. So I <laughs> cashed in business. my two first class plane tickets. <laughs> and I got, I took you six girls. You brought your whole, six, your whole gaggle. Your whole gaggle I of friends. I brought a whole bunch of girls. Four friends, my sister and me. And we were in Monte Carlo. And I mean, we rented dresses and jewels. Wow. They gave us rosé. They gave us three what? bed, three wow. hotel rooms. And we had like this free, amazing, glorious, glorious vacation. But every oh. night um, that we had to go to a different event, with my Joey and I were alone. in. <laughs> yeah. Well, he would knock on our door when you'd go to bed at night. He'd be like, hey, you guys up for partying? We're like, my Let's manager? Do it. Oh. <laughs> oh. No. Oh, oh, <laughs> That's oh. Hence, door, now like, we like, know why the manager wanted to be on the trip. Oh, God. No. He wanted the vacation. We're going no. to Jimmy Z's to dance with some astronauts. Want to come? And he's uh, like, I'm going so, with you guys. We're going to Jimmy Z's to dance with astronauts. Oh. Listen to what you just said. I know. Oh, so, wow. Oh, I've got so God. many stories about that trip. But wait, I have to tell this one about you. I was an old you. man. I was like, I'm going to bed. See you. Oh, you That's... were so an old man. I'm like, come I on, dance. You. You're like, I'm going to bed. But we... <laughs> 
But we were um, we were in a car together, and every night I was only allowed because I wasn't supposed to have that many people there. I was only allowed to bring one guest with me in the car to each event. So this one night, my friend Amy's going with us, and I don't really know. I haven't dug into her past or what she does. If, <laughs> you know, all this turns stuff. out she's an arms dealer. Like, oh, 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 I decided just to screw huh? with Joey. I was like, because he does what you guys said about the doctors. He does that with everybody. Like, <laughs> what, what, tell me more about what you you know about cars. You know about everybody. Ford. Like. Oh, I want to, I love Fords. Let's talk about Fords or whatever, whatever it is, right? He wants to talk about. So he was, um, he was in the car and I said, I'm going to screw with Joe. I told my friend, I kind of like winked at her and I said, this is my friend, Amy. And he, you said something like Amy, what? Or I said, oh, her name's Amy Chase, you know, Chase Manhattan Bank. She's of the Chase Manhattan Bank family. Meanwhile, totally making this up. It's totally oh. a lie. But I'm like, in my head, I'm trying to think of a cool name that would, oh. she could be, you know, not a Vanderbilt, but something fake. So I'm like, this is Amy Chase, Chase Manhattan Bank. And you were like, really? So what do you think about bonds these days? Oh, my God. And she goes, oh, no, because oh, I said, said her husband I thought it was, was an expert. Oh, no. I thought it was a damn so expert. Oh, you know? no. <laughs> so she thinks she's an expert, and she starts you... digging in. And my friend can't, my friend can't stay with us. So she goes, um, actually, no, that's not what my husband does. She couldn't play along. Oh, and I was like, oh, that, oh well. Oh, my God. And so she gives up, and he goes, he gets so bummed. He's like, oh, whatever. Okay, you just mess with me. Great. <laughs> And I was like, and then he goes, he turns to her, he goes, so what does your husband do? And she goes, he owns Gulf Oil in the U.S. And you were like, so what does he think of the price per barrel? And I was like, that. You literally asked him that, asked her that. And I was like, first of all, that's how I learned about it. I was like, I'm sorry, he did what? He does what? See, <laughs> he, I found her oh. out information about her own friend. Oh. Yes. My God. I don't think like that. It's funny, but you were just like, what's the price per barrel? What's the, I was like, oh, you know, so it's not just doctors. I would say it's all around. You're like, you're just interested. You're like, tell me more. Teach me something. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. That's right. I'm always learning, learning, man. I'm always learning. That's why it was my mind hurts all day long. So I'm constantly learning. I'm like a sponge. <laughs> I think it's because you don't sleep. Well, that's the other thing you and I have in common is that energy with no caffeine, right? That that's like right. nonstop oh. energy. No That's caffeine. another thing. Okay, Mel and I have nuclear energy. People oh, you both throw, are like that. Oh yeah. She's oh, so the same you're like way. Joe. Oh yeah. Oh, she burns. I don't hot. know how he does it. I have no clue how <laughs> this man does it. With the kids, the no sleep, he still has more energy than I do. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's like straight edge. He's total straight edge. It's like a straight edge, clean, crazy. Yeah. I am. And it you works. and you like eat like like crazy amounts of food and it's true. love aquaphor, right? Are you, are you like all about the aquaphor? Are you well aquaphor is good, you know, for lips and stuff. Yeah, you put that on there mm -hmm. and you know for like if you have cracked hands, aquaphor Speaking is great. Of, uh, aqua, I did an episode of uh this is really random, but this is just reminded me of aquaphor on the lips with Gary Sinise. Uh, what was he on? NYPD or what? like New York? Oh, yeah, yeah. N N y N N N CSI, CSI New York. York. Yeah, so I was on the show. CSI New York. I was, I was on the show. I know. Well, this yeah. is the thing. So I'm on the show and I had this big crying scene. I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying. And, you know, I'm emotional. So he comes up. He's like, wow, you got a lot of tears in there. That's really impressive. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, you know, do I recognize you? And I'm like, well, you might know my brother, Joey Lawrence. He goes, I love your brother. He gave me this aquaphor for my lips. <laughs> and his lips are shiny. And if you look, he's always got shiny lips. And I'm like... That's from Joe. Joe totally passed that on I to Gary Sinise. The best Sinise. part about kissing your brother on TV was that there was like, it wasn't awkward because there was like this layer between us. It was like, okay, True. because... <laughs> Good Our call. A fake skin layer touching. of aquaphor. Yeah. It was like, yeah. We fake, when we had to kiss, it was a layer between oh, us. Yeah. So Because it was, nice it, cause it was like kissing yeah, my brother. Like, How great is that? That's fantastic. I love it. No, no, because we had just known each other so long. And all of a sudden, no, one of day, they were like, you guys have to kiss. We were like, uh, That is awkward. Uh, it, no, it is awkward. Uh, it, it was totally awkward. Because we are. We're like, we're, yeah. we're like, we're like siblings. I know. You know? We've it, known each true. other for yeah. so long. For so long. For and you're so just long. like, okay, guys, make out. I know. Uh, okay. And we had fun. We had fun. We had the, the oh, scenes were so funny. Oh, wow. wow. And we had fun doing it. Let me tell you. We had fun doing it. The scenes were so funny. We had scenes where I, I remember I had to take Mel back in the show to meet my family. Well, okay, that's enough. Oh, cool. No, to family? meet my family. Okay, okay, okay. And she <laughs> pretended to be my ex because we didn't want to. Remember that? My ex-wife yep. in the show, remember who was this like Jersey chick, and it that was, was Megan Hilty. It was Megan, Megan Hilty, Hilty, and, and Doris like, Roberts was my trashy. was my Nona. Remember Doris, the amazing great yeah. late Doris Roberts was my grandma, and we was my Nona. We didn't want to. We thought it would it would put her in an early grave if she knew that I wasn't married to my to my wife anymore. So Mel went undercover as oh, like, that's, that's oh, smart. and she was fan. We had so much fun. Yeah. She was hilarious. Jersey, yeah, it was super fun. And like just channeling Megan Hilty in this like fabulous bright Jersey, color. like real housewives oh, of Jersey. Like, oh, we end up in bed with the big, oh, <laughs> oh, my God. oh, oh, it great. was. And it was a two parter. It was a two parter. And that's when the episode when we end up in bed together. That's oh. right. That's right. That's wow. right. In my grandmother's house. Oh, it was great. <laughs> oh, it was so, it's amazing. It was, 
I tell you, David, David Kendall, Bob Young, they, they, they really wrote. No, the, smart. the show is executed so well. Honestly, yeah. I'm telling you, I've well, seen so many clips since we've been off the air, and I can't believe. Seth Curlin was brilliant. He Seth wrote up. Seth was big, He was EP on Friends for all these years. Mm. He was on our show. And we yeah. had a we had a fantastic writing staff. They came up with really brilliant stuff. Remember uh, Ed the Driscoll? They bring Ed Driscoll in for yeah. Thursday and Fridays. And Ed Driscoll was, I mean, Julie he wrote. Julie Brown, too. What? Oh, yeah. I love Julie Brown as Punch-Up. Unbelievable. Really it's great. Ed wrote opening monologues for Billy Crystal for the Oscars. Oh, and wrote, and oh still to this Some day, of the best oh, monologues, still to this day, yeah. Still to this day, does all, most of Leno's oh, stuff. Oh, so yeah, they had great. We had amazing that's, people that on that, that show. Awesome. Just incredible, you know, artists at that craft. Because half-hour comedy, multi-camera, and I tell people all the time, it's not easy to do. People don't know how to do it anymore. They just don't know how to do it. There's it's a, a slip. There's a David musicality. Kendall, there's a there's a my there's a favorite song hashtag and dance. is from David Kendall, which is God bless the funny people. Yep. Because <laughs> they keep laughing and they, you know, like he, would he say that always all the time. says that. Yeah. Yep. God bless the funny people. I yep. mean, constantly. Constantly. That's, I have it written down somewhere on my shelf. I have like a like a bookmark that says that or something. Or it's God like, well, it's maybe true. if lightning God strikes, maybe we'll have an opportunity to do it again, Mel. Wouldn't that be yeah. fun? We should, yeah. right? We should think about it. I mean, TV's in the toilet. Maybe this time so I'll make out with Matt instead anyway. or something. <laughs> huh? I said, maybe this time I'll, I'll make out with Matt in an episode Do or it! <laughs> I got Aquaphor. I got Aquaphor. <laughs> Lots of, sure everybody's that? getting Aquaphor. Yep. Everybody's getting Aquaphor. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like it like, it's, reminds me of like Vaseline or something. I don't know if I'd like that. It absorbs better. Think, That's exactly it, what it is. It yeah, is I think, I, think, like I, think I might go nude it's like a boxing. It's like a boxing fight, though. You, so you can, slide slip, right you can oh, slip the no, kisses. I don't want that. I don't want yeah, that. Yeah, want it's that. great. It's great. Yeah. It's great. Mel, thank you for being here today. Can you believe how fast this hour went? You gotta come I know, back. Right? You have to come you back. Yeah, come back. You anytime. promise? I would love to. Promise? All right. We love you. I will, yeah, and we you're can, traveling and working up a we storm. Do. And I know you're always doing a bunch of stuff. But yeah. listen, next time you're in LA, please, and I and I mean this, reach out. We we should get the families together. I think it'd be great. Absolutely. I mean, I haven't no, seen the boys in so many since years. They were little. I little, know. Little. Likewise, you know. And I have the new little one well, first, and the whole thing. Tucker's so. gonna be. A li- I know. I gotta meet the new baby. I can't gotta believe you. I can't believe a baby at our age. Like I know. Me either. But it's. I'll tell you something. It's. It's so cool to do it from this perspective. Like, it's a whole different thing than when I was 29, 30. You know, it's way different. I'd be so Um, tired. You know, I get tired tired a little bit. I get tired. You guys are freaking me out. I I haven't even gotten started yet. That hasn't even started. All right? Yeah. Thanks, Mel. We're only three and a half years (laughs) apart, Mel. Wait, yeah, was I there when some magic moment happened last year at 90s Con, Matt? Was I was I witness to something? Yeah, you might have been. You might have been. Oh, you yeah. might have been there. I oh, think yeah. you were. Yes, yes. you might yeah. have been I witness was, to it. When I heard about that later. I was like, that's weird. That's, I was there. That is magic moment. I'll tell you, I fell in love with her there, too. Yeah, <laughs> she's pretty spectacular. Everybody did. Everybody fell in love with her there. I did. I was <laughs> like, I have a new best friend. I love her. Yeah, she's I know. super cool. I know. Yeah, so I listen, hi. we have to get together. We have to, okay? And and let's talk. I mean, people are saying- And my, I gotta hook Andy up. I'm hooking Andy yes, up. Yes, yes. You know, I, please, yeah, it sounds lovely. Look at Andy, lives please. in LA. I, I, think she's a, I think she's a little bit younger than you, but I'm sure you'll be okay with that. And, okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> sure, she's a little little. Yes. I mean, what is that? Oh my mean? God, my palms are sweating. Sure, my I'd love that. Sure, Aquaphor, Aquaphor, you got too Aquaphor. much Aquaphor. Aquaphor. Right. Yeah, it mean. locks in moisture, yeah. so you don't want to put it on sweaty palms. I don't really have sweaty yeah, palms. I know you don't, I know you don't. All right, listen. Hey, will you say hi to your mom for me, please? I will. Yes, say send my Mark regards as well. And all yeah. your kids. Hey, your yes. mom. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I will. Send their love. All right, guys. Yeah. Mel, love text you. me. All right, and I'll love see you, you soon. Okay? Thank you, Melissa. All right. Guys, Bye. Melissa, Joe, and all yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much, Melly. Love you. We'll talk soon. All right? All right. Be well. All right. Bye. Hey, guys. The Lawrence Brothers here to thank you for tuning in and watching this episode of the Brotherly Love Podcast. That's right. And to watch clips from this pod, go to the Podco YouTube channel at the link in the description. And for exclusive weekly bonus content, join our Patreon now. The link is also in the description. And we will see you guys next week. Next week. Next week.